Hi, YouTubers and wet shavers everywhere. It's Mark with GeorgeTune.com. I'm back with another Monday morning mailbag. Get yourself a cup of coffee, kick back, relax. Let's talk some wet shaving and some other things. What do you got this morning? Hang on. Hmm. That's really, really good. Uh, again, round two with uh, Trader Joe's Autumn Maple Coffee. It's out there for a limited time. If you got a Trader Joe's in the area, I recommend it. It's really, really good, good coffee. And the coffee mug this morning is uh, Sandusky Library. This is an historic building in Ohio. We were there, a group of cartoonists. I was with a group of cartoonists. We were there to uh, give a talk and sign some books and uh, the library gave us each a coffee mug to say thanks. And this is a, a Carnegie Library, Andrew Carnegie. Uh, helped fund this library. I'll have a link below so you can read a little bit of the history of the library. But I'll just uh, give you a little bit of what they have on the page here through the efforts of Sanduskian Mrs. J. O. Moss. In 1899, Andrew Carnegie, wealthy philanthropist, offered to give $50,000 for a public library in our city. Uh, Mr. Carnegie specified that the city must give $3,000 per year to maintain the building, which they agreed to do so. The contract for the building was awarded in the summer of 1900, and the building completed in 1901. Sandusky's library is one of the three earliest Carnegie libraries in Ohio. The gala opening dedication was held July 3rd, 1901. How about that? And it is an absolutely beautiful building. It was a real honor to uh, to be there and to see that history there. Really, really very neat. So if you're ever going, if you ever find yourself going through Sandusky, Ohio, uh, hey, it doesn't cost anything to stop in and just see the library. Really, really very, very nice. Okay, uh, I got some great, great questions here. But before I get to them, a couple of things. Uh, in speaking about, in the last mailbag, in talking about soaps, tallow and non-tallow, I forgot to mention, Cella, boy, Cella is great, and Cella has tallow in it. It's the second ingredient. The first ingredient is coconut oil. The second ingredient is tallow, and boy, this stuff is great. You know what? It's, it's, it, I'm going to use it tomorrow morning. It's so good. It really, really is. It's got that nice almond cherry uh, scent. A lot of, uh, a lot of wet shavers say it smells like Christmas cookies, and if you love Cella, you don't have to limit yourself to just this little jar, little tub here, you can get this block of Cella. And I'll have links below where you can get it on Amazon and also a link where there is a pretty good deal on it as well. But uh, this just arrived the other day. It's a thousand, thousand, it's a one kilo, about 2.2 pounds, I believe. And tallow is the second ingredient. You can see right there, list of ingredients right here. I don't know if you can see that, but Tallow is the second ingredient. So you know what, they've got it sealed here. Let's just open it up and take a look. Um, right there, just open that up. And, well, that's a lot of, <laughs> that's a lot of soap. And, uh, okay, so they have uh, a little card here with compliments uh, right there. And uh, it's in Italian as well there. And here it is, wow. And, oh, wow, look at that. I'm going to have to uh, crack this open, unseal it, unwrap it. Look at that. So the idea here is to crack it open like this. Just unwrap it, crack it open, unwrap it, cut some off, uh, put it in the bowl, and then take the rest of this and store it away. Now, a lot of wet shavers who have reviewed this on Amazon say that they, uh, they get a gallon size Ziploc bag and then put this into the Ziploc bag and then um, store it in the refrigerator on the lower shelf is what, the, is what they say. So that's what I'm gonna do with this. But there it is, I'll have links for this. Um, and uh, wow, 2.2 pounds. If you love Cella and you love Italo soap, boy, uh, you can get this, but you can get this too uh, and save a little bit of money in the long run. All right, so let's get to some of these questions. Uh, this is from NY Diesel in FL. He is commenting on a video review I did on the Global Shave um, Shave Therapy System. He says, uh, great shave, Mark. Thank you. 
Here's a question. There's an intershave oil now. This is new. No offense to anyone, but to me, if the soap and pre-shave is doing its job, you really wouldn't need it, right? I'll probably still buy it and try it out though. Keep doing what you are doing. It's very good. Well, thank you very, very much for that NY Diesel in FL. I really appreciate that a lot. Uh, I love this system. I really do. Uh, they give you, this comes from Sheldon Quinn and Global Shave. He gives you three vials of a pre-shave, uh, an intershave, and also a post-shave right here. So that's all you need. You just need those three and your shave is good. You know, with your shaving cream, your shaving soap. But yeah, the pre-shave is really, really good. Now, uh, Sheldon also uh, commented on, on this and he remarked that um, one more thing uh, not apparent in Mark's excellent demonstration of the system is that the entire system uses aromatherapy to support your overall health. Step one, the pre-shave oil uses essential oils that are known to provide relaxation. Step two, the intershave oil detoxifies the skin and supports overall detoxification of the body as well. Finally, step three, the post-shave oil is designed to not only help heal, but also boost your immunity as well. Well, you know what? I, I, I feel absolutely great after, after using this and the scent is beautiful and lovely. And really, I was a little, I questioned whether or not I needed the second step of the intershave oil. You know what? This is really nice. Step number two, to, between pass number one and two, to put this in between there, the intershave oil, that is really nice. And if I need a third pass again with this and then finish up with the post shave oil, uh, I like it a lot. I thought it worked out really, really well. And it really gave me a terrific shave and a terrific feel. You know, something, something different to try. Um, and that's why I say the wet shave is so great because there are folks out there who are creating these different products that uh, benefit um, the traditional wet shave. So if you're not doing the traditional wet shave, as I always say, do the traditional wet shave. There is so much out there that is available and uh, you'll hit something, you'll hit on something that's right for you, your skin, your beard, and your wallet. This was uh, really, really, really very nice. And it's got this great travel pouch too, like this, big enough to, you know, small enough to travel. Perfect size, you can throw that in your dot kit and be on your way. So yeah, uh, I was a little bit, I questioned an intershave step also. I did it. I love it. It's great on a Sunday morning for sure. All right. Thanks very much for that. Okay. Mental, M, sorry, Mental TMC. Um, he commented on a cold shave video review that I did using cold water, shave with cold water. And he says, great shave. Great, he says, great video. I will have to give this cold water thing a whirl. Well, you know what? I, I've done the cold water shave and it really is nice and invigorating. Now, granted, it probably works a little bit better on warm days than cold days, but um, the idea is that with a warm water shave, you're softening your beard so that the whisker is shaved away a little more easily. Cold water shave stiffens the whisker so that um, the razor kind of you know, chops it or slices it off very quickly. The idea also is that um, you don't have to worry about hot water and uh, you uh, uh, it will reduce irritation. This is the idea. This is what I've heard. And with me, yeah, I didn't get any irritation at all from a cold water shave. So if you're trying to reduce irritation in your wet shave, give the cold water shave a try. Now, Benjamin Franklin recommended, he wrote this. The act of shaving with cold water is much easier. It allows the whiskers to be stiff, the razor to slice the hair, and obtaining hot water much less of a bother. Well, yeah, of course, during colonial days, who wants to mess around with hot water? We take it for granted. You just turn the tap on, you got hot water. Back then, not so much. So he advocated for cold, uh, cold water shave. He also had this to say about shaving in general. This is a very good quote. Uh, human felicity is produced not so much by great pieces of good fortune that seldom happen as by little advantages that occur every day. Thus, if you teach a poor young man to shave himself and keep his razor in order, you may contribute more to the happiness of his life 
than in giving him a thousand guineas. The money may be soon spent, the regret only remaining of having foolishly consumed it. But in the other case, he escapes the frequent vexation of waiting for barbers and of their sometimes dirty fingers, offensive breaths, and dull razors. He shaves when most convenient to him and enjoys daily the pleasure of it being done with a good instrument. How about that? So Benjamin Franklin really advocated for the traditional wet shave. Uh, of course, sure, with a straight razor back then, but I'm sure he would have loved using safety razors too. Okay, uh, so thanks very much from, uh, for that from uh, Mental TMC. Hope I got that name right. Everyone's screen name is a little bit different. Okay, this next question comes from Duke Luke 15. Would you recommend the Maggard MR11 or the Merker 34C as a beginner safety razor? Well, um, he quoted some product information uh, from Maggards, and Maggards is a great online source for razors and soaps and blades and everything else. They are really, really great. And they also have a meetup, I think, once a year, and they're in the Michigan area. I think, uh, I can't remember, Ann Arbor maybe? I'm not sure, somewhere around there, but I have, to, I have to look again, my apologies to them. But yeah, they're really, really friendly people, they know their stuff, and um, if you're looking for a razor information, really, they'll, they'll really, really help you. Their product information on the V3 says this, the V3 Standard 2, this head is available in chrome, gray, or black finish, Best for beginners, this head offers a mild, moderate shave with excellent efficiency. Shaves just as well as many of the big name brands with no noticeable difference in quality, unquote. Now, I bought a V3 head. Now, I, I'm not sure that I have the V3 standard too. I have the V3. Now, I found the V3 to be very aggressive for me. Very aggressive for me, but yeah, it is very, very efficient. Now, when I compared the V3 here, and I have it on a Scotch and Stowe handle here, stainless handle. This is the V3 head. When I compare the V3 to the Merker 34C, the HD 34C, or what they're now calling the classic two-piece razor, if you go to their Amazon page, this is really very mild. This is a very, very good razor for beginners, no doubt about it. When I compare these two, this one wins hands down. This is a good razor. This is a very, very good razor, but I feel that it's too, I, I felt it was too aggressive for me. However, uh, the V3 Standard 2 uh, razor may be different than this one that I bought. They may have upgraded it. They may have redesigned it. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe something new in their product line. I'm not entirely sure, but it is a really, really nice razor head. I've reviewed it and I've shaved with it. And while I like it, it's not something that I would use every single day, being fair skinned and having my skin border on the sensitive time side. Uh, it really is, I put it in the aggressive category. It's not bad, it's great. But if you want that kind of a razor, then uh, yeah, this, is, this would be very, very good. If you start out with a mild razor, you may be very well graduating to this razor and this might be giving you, you know, a lifetime of great, great shaves. Um, but yeah, as far as a beginner razor, for someone with fair skin, <laughs> young person, uh, 34C, uh, really very, very good choice between those two. This is the one I would go with. This one also has a narrower uh, cutting angle. So you really, ha it's, it's tight. It's not a wide cutting angle like a lot of other razors uh, out there. So you, it really allows you to refine your technique so you hit that angle precisely. And when you hit the angle precisely, you get a really, really nice shave. If you don't, then the shave won't be as efficient as you'd like it to be. But because of that, you can really, really learn the wet shave very well with this because of that, that narrower cutting angle, in my opinion. But yeah, very, very, very good razor. Uh, this also is a great razor. I just think my experience is the V3 is more aggressive than the Merker HD 34C. Uh, this is a nice mild razor, great for beginners, and it's an all around razor also. There are a lot of experienced wet shavers out there who really, really like this razor a lot. All right, I hope that, uh, hope that answers some questions for you. I really sure, I surely did really, I mean, I really enjoyed this. This was a lot of fun. Um, 
Uh, like I say, uh, hope you uh, check out that Bricacella, and uh, if you're ever going through Sandusky, you know, stop in at their library, and um, wow, you know, just really fun, great things happening in the traditional wet shave world. So thanks very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Please share, please subscribe, please like. Hit that bell so it'll give you a yell the next time I upload a video. Uh, comment below, let me know. Check out my blog, georgetune.com slash blog for my comic strip George, other cartoons, other videos like this. Check out my Amazon product page uh, at amazon.com slash shop slash Marksery, where you'll find all the products I review on this channel organized and categorized so you can find everything very, very easy. Thanks very much again. Make it a great week.